long ago one could find themselves at any golf club parking lot or retirement community and seeing many of these things parked out front but not just there taxis flooded the roads these things and if you were caught going too fast then you'd see one of these things behind you with flashing lights telling you to pull over. Yes, I'm talking about the world famous Ford Panther platform. And this is one late example of the platform and one of the best cars that rode upon it, the glorious Mercury Grand Marquis, which is the best selling and longest lived Mercury model, unbelievably. 2.7 million units from the late 70s to 2011 and a production run of 36 years. The Panther platform is a very important footnote in automotive history because correct me if I'm wrong, it is the last of the fully body on frame old car type sedans. Body on frame cars are mostly pretty much all pickup trucks, some SUVs now, but back in the day, this was what you could see a average family or an old man driving around. This particular car is a later model, one of the last ones made, and it's a pristine example with just under 50,000 miles. And it's lent to me by Taymor, the same guy who owns the Mercedes E63 AMG. I think he understands what is important about having a well-varied car collection. He has a 500 horsepower AMG for when he wants to tear up some back roads. He has a couple of large Ram trucks that will be coming to the channel soon for when he wants to do towing. Don't know why he bought two of them at the same time, but he did. And for classic old man motoring, he has this lovely, beautiful Grand Marquis. And I'm going to try to review this car and not try to buy it from him after, but this is easily my type of car. I absolutely love these things because they just do not exist anymore. Find me another huge sedan like this, body on frame, V8 engine under the hood, beautiful comfortable seating for six people and a column mounted automatic gear selector. This car is from a bygone era that will never come back. As I previously stated, the Mercury Grand Marquis is the longest lived production model of the Mercury lineup. And it would have continued had Ford not decided to can the Mercury brand altogether. Sort of like General Motors, how they threw away half their brands because of the government bailout from the recession. Ford having sort of woken up with a clear head, realized what are we doing with this stupid Mercury brand? And they just threw it away, which is kind of unfortunate. There is one important thing we need to do of course, it is a classic old American grandpa land yacht. So what do we have to do? We have to rock it. Now it's, this is like a Lotus Exige compared to that Buick Riviera that I reviewed a couple weeks ago. But look at that. I mean, how can you not be looking at this wherever you're watching this video, probably on the toilet, and not be thinking, oh my God, that car has to be the most comfortable thing in the world. I want one right now. That's exactly what I'm thinking. And of course, it's a proper enthusiast automobile with a 4.6 liter V8 out of the Mustang and it sends power 220 raging flamboyant horses to the rear wheels via a four speed automatic transmission, which is exactly what you want. Also, this car is the ultimate edition, which sounds very excellent indeed. And of course, that was enough to get everybody flooding into Mercury showrooms so that they could buy themselves their own. Oh wait, they didn't. Mercury doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> this car is a fourth generation model. And while it does technically share its underpinnings with the original 79 Grand Marquis and LTD Crown Victoria, there's a lot of modifications to make this a little bit more modern. I will also say that I think out of all of the Panther platform cars from 1979 to 2011, this is the most beautiful. I love how it's got these chrome accents all over the place that aren't too much but they look nice and they make it a little bit more luxurious. I love this grill on the front with the Mercury badge and all of its glory and longevity. And I just love how massive this thing is. It's got a big long hood and a big massive trunk. It's absolutely huge. Let me show you. All right, so I told you it's got quite the trunk. So let's pull out the Mercury key. Definitely not a Ford logo that's been 
covered by a Mercury logo or anything. This key is actually shared with cars like the Ford GT, likely the only thing that's shared between this and the Ford GT. So I'll press this button here and the trunk pops open and it's very nice and light if you're, you know, let's say getting on a bit in your age, like a Grand Marquis owner typically is, and you're like, uh. oh yeah, just enough. Now I'm surprised to see that there isn't an actual cover underneath the trunk lid. Maybe there was one originally and it's not there anymore, but that's a bit of a cost cutting measure that I wouldn't expect from a glorious Grand Marquis, but we'll forgive it for that. And you see a tiny little space saver wheel that's mounted on a shelf in the trunk, okay? This trunk is so big that it has two stories to it. It's got the main trunk where you can fit all of your golf bags and then it's got a separate little area in the trunk where the spare tire can go and a bunch of other stuff. I've never seen a car with two different levels of trunk inside, but if there's any car that would have something like that, I would expect it from a Panther platform car. Just look at how huge this trunk lid is too. I mean, it's like four feet long. <laughs> and of course, if you're getting kidnapped in a Grand Marquis, which technically you could fit quite a few people back here. If there's three or four of you that are stuffed in the back of a Grand Marquis and you're on the way to the woods where you're gonna be killed and buried, then I'm sure one of you guys is bound to be able to see that thing glowing in the dark and you'll all be able to escape at once. So let's just try to reach this. Oh yeah. That is glorious. Can you tell that I'm just in such a good mood right now because I'm reviewing an American land yacht, which is one of my favorite types of cars. I love these cars and I'm so sad that they're gone. Ford, bring it back. All right, with that, we are going to transition to backseat comfort. I have to say that when you're getting in and out of this car, it has the most satisfying, in my limited experience, it has the most satisfying door closing sound. Listen, it's just like this amazing mechanical click. Does that not sound so good? Oh, I could do this all day. Oh yeah, this seat here is in my driving position. I am six foot three and Pretty much this seat is actually as far back as it'll go. And yeah, my knees are definitely touching. For such a massive car, I would expect a bit more room back here. But then you remember just how absolutely gargantuan the trunk is, and it sort of makes a little bit more sense. You, a 85-year-old retiree who owns this Grand Marquis, you're gonna be driving around five of your other retiree elderly friends who are quite frail and small so they'll be able to fit back here just fine. Got some nice wood right here, which is definitely real, and I'm sure it's not plastic in any way or any sort at all. And materials up here aren't too bad either. A little plasticky, but not horrible. Center console lid here with some very pathetic looking cup holders that I wouldn't trust for anything, not even water. You might be thinking, well, is there anything back here that's actually interesting? And the answer is no, no, not really. It's a Panther platform car. A lot of these were Ford Crown Victoria police interceptors, which were cop cars. So there were a lot of murderers and drug dealers and bad, very bad people that were stuffed in the back of these. And it's equipped like a medieval jail back here. It's absolutely, I mean, I've got a window that I can play with, door lock, you know. It's a very boring back seat, so let's move up front. Before you get into the driver's seat of the Mercury Grand Marquis, you may notice a keypad on the door. And what that is for is unlocking the door. You get a certain key combination from the dealership like you'd have for unlocking your phone or whatever, and you put it into the door and it unlocks the door for you. So if you're an old man and you have some Alzheimer's and dementia problems, and you leave your keys in the cup holder there, as long as you can remember your number passcode for the door, then you'll be fine. <laughs> but chances are, if you forgot your keys, you might have forgotten your passcode as well. So, but it's a Ford trademark. Lots and lots of Fords have had it, and it's not all that interesting. But for people that don't know, that's what it's for. So let's get up front. Oh, and we sit down. And it's an American land yacht, so of course it's got very comfy, pillowy seats that are like couches. No support at all. I mean, if you're peeling through some turns really fast, there's absolutely no side bolstering in the seat, so you're going to fall over into the passenger's lap. 
and that's gonna be a bit awkward. And it is a full three-seater bench up here. So in a pinch, you could fit three elderly people up here. It doesn't feel that great in the center up here, but I think it's awesome that it has a bench seat, and I absolutely love that about this car. <laughs> Again, it's a body-on-frame, huge V8 rear-wheel drive sedan with seating for six and a bench seat up front and a column shifter. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> and once again, beautiful, definitely real wood trim up here and on the door panel. And here's one weird thing that I'm noticing is that the dashboard is gray, but the rest of the interior is light beige. Beige like your hearing aid, you know? It's that color. Probably the original owner of this car noted about that and they liked it. It's got the, it's got the same color as my hearing aid. So yeah, this is definitely a cost cutting measure that I'm noticing up here because it is just a gray dashboard on a completely beige interior. Everywhere else you look is beige, except for this dashboard and the steering wheel, which is gray. And it's probably gray on every Grand Marquis that was ever made in this period. And it's a very basic, simple dashboard. It's flat, not driver centric in the slightest bit possible. You've got big buttons for your climate and big buttons for your radio. It's all simplified. Over there, you have a traditional type gauge cluster with analog gauges, but it does have a digital speedometer for if the numbers are a bit too small for your aging eyes, you can look in that little LCD display and it shows you your speed, which is kind of nice. This is one of the late steering wheels that was on these Panther platform cars, and it's a two spoke wheel design with a huge flat airbag panel in the middle it's quite ugly, but it is very comfortable to hold. And of course, the steering in this car is very, very light indeed. And it has a four speed with overdrive column shifted automatic transmission, which I absolutely love. I have always loved column shifters because they're just so satisfying to pull it into gear and then get out on the road and do whatever you need to do. This car gets bonus points for that for sure. And that's pretty much it up here. I mean, there's not that much else to describe. These seats, while very comfortable indeed, don't really have that much design to them or anything to note at all. You have a lap belt for the middle passenger. You got some cup holders here, and there's not really all that much to talk about. For an American car of this era, the interior quality is actually very good. I would say I would have expected it to be horrible. You can find some pretty gross plastics here and there, and some panel gaps and slight discoloration between panels, but it's not as bad as you would be forgiven to expect for a car of this era from this country. <laughs> I think the biggest problem up here is the gray dashboard, which is, now that I've noticed, is bothering me a lot. Let's pop the hood and look at the world famous modular Ford 4.6 liter V8. Oh God, I love that door click. And I love the fact that a vehicle of this size is enough to make a 4.6 liter dual overhead cam V8 look tiny. This is one of the biggest reasons why these cars were so popular, particularly with taxis and cops, is because this engine, the 4.6 liter V8, was an absolute workhorse and would last pretty much forever. This was not the most efficient, not the most powerful, but it sure lasted forever and could take so much abuse that it was good enough, again, for taxi drivers in New York City and cop cars literally everywhere else. So let's just look through a list here of how many cars had this engine. Lincoln Town Car, Ford Crown Victoria, Mercury Grand Marquis, Ford Thunderbird, Mercury Cougar, Ford F-Series, the pickup trucks, Ford E-Series, the vans, Ford Explorer and Mercury Mountaineer, Ford Expedition, Ford Mustang GT, Rover 75 V8. It's pretty clear that this engine was used in a lot of Ford developed cars back in the day. There were very many different versions of this engine, two valves, three valves, supercharged, all the rest. But in this car, it was 224 horsepower that it developed. And again, through a four speed automatic transmission to the rear wheels, so. Let's experience it. My favorite part of a car like this is the driving experience. Oh yeah, nice manly starter noise. Kick that 4.6 V8 into action. And what do we think? Should we have two seats up here or three? So to get going, I have a foot mounted parking brake that I can't get to go off, hold on. Oh, there's a release. Oh yeah, that's so satisfying. 
clips down the foot mounted parking brake and then pull on this and it comes up. With a column mounted automatic transmission, shifting into gear is always an event. Oh yeah. And now one hand is all it takes. And I'm looking out over like seven feet of American metal. That hood houses a 4.6 liter V8, which by most car standards is quite a large engine. But when it's underneath the hood of a Grand Marquis or any Panther platform car, it looks so small. <laughs> a bit blurry what it makes, but it's between 220 and 240. And man, I love these types of cars. I mean, I make fun of this thing, but I absolutely love these types of cars so much because once again, it's a bygone era that doesn't exist. And the handling, the handling on this thing is absolutely hilarious. I mean, it's got so much body roll. I mean, car journalists today would not accept a car like this. It's big land yacht, body on frame, and it just has so much roll to it. And I've even got a traction control off button should things get a little sporty. It, <laughs> this thing is not a corner car at all. Not a Lotus Elise. It's, it couldn't be further from a Lotus Elise actually, but there's something so magical about it. One thing that's nice about this engine is I'm sitting at a stoplight and it's idling and you can't feel it at all. You can barely hear it. It's so nicely muffled in this car so smooth over bumps it's it could be better definitely could be more comfortable over bumps and i think that has a lot to do with the fact that it's body on frame not the most comfortable setup when you're going over bumps or undulations or anything like that and it doesn't have really a modern suspension setup either so for ride comfort you're really relying on these beautifully cushy pillowy seats None of these other motorists on the road with me right now get to experience what I'm experiencing. Traveling around in American luxury and style, and I absolutely love that. It's not very exciting to drive, doesn't have a lot of very exciting features inside, but you really have to experience a car like this to understand what the point of it is. It's like a well-needed vacation from all of the stuff that clogs up highways now, crossovers, EVs, sports sedans because it's totally different from anything. So nice to experience a car like this every once in a while, and I really kind of want one. And like most Mercury Grand Marquis, it's gonna last long enough to outlive its owner because it's just a bulletproof powertrain, well-proven chassis and setup, and there were many different versions of it should you want something more luxurious, like a Lincoln Town car, something in between, like a Grand Marquis, or something a little bit more sporty and fun like a Crown Victoria or a Mercury Marauder, which I didn't really mention the Marauder very much. The Marauder was more of a definitely a sporty setup on this platform. Instead of a column shifter, it had a traditional gear selector and a traditional center console. I believe it made almost 300 horsepower. It had more power. It had a sportier suspension setup, but I think that misses the point of a Panther platform car. It's not supposed to be a sports car it's supposed to be something that you can drive to and from the retirement home until the end of your days draws near enough it's very quiet just regular acceleration very quiet indeed well, let's see how it does when we put our foot down Ooh, it makes a good sound but not much else not really doesn't move very fast doesn't gain speed very well. It does sound very good when it gets up in the rev range, but back in the day, I'm sure it was great having this much power, but by modern standards, it's really not that much at all. So it's best just to put one hand on the wheel like that, lounge back, and just relax on the way home. That's what a Panther platform car is all about. Now, would I like to see a car like this make a comeback? Absolutely I would, but I don't think it would sell very well. No, because modern car buyers demand something from their cars that this car just doesn't offer at all. They want something fuel efficient. This really isn't. They want something with a tall commanding driving position like an SUV. This doesn't have one, but it has quite a nice driving position again with 
six or seven feet of hood in front of me. If they're gonna get a sedan, they want something that can handle turns really well. This car really does none of that, but that doesn't do it justice because it's such an amazingly relaxing experience and it's so refreshing driving something like this compared to everything else that you drive, BMWs, every sedan that's on the road right now. I would recommend anybody who, wa who wants to be serious about owning a car collection and being a car person, they need to have one old fashioned land yacht. And this is a great example because it's an old fashioned land yacht of the old American sedan ways that also has modern features like airbags and a nice radio. So with that, I think I'm gonna end that video there. Hope everyone enjoyed this lovely, amazing American land yacht experience. I know I certainly did, and now I really want one. Like, subscribe, do all the normal YouTube stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.